So yesterday, LHG5 just revealed the incoming character's adjustment. And these changes are kind of crazy. And today, I will be analyzing these changes. Alright, beginning with Cowboy, his Balloon Rescue ability got rework. So when he rescues a survivor that's being carried by the hunter, the rescued survivor remained knocked down. Though I am not sure if the cowboy can still carry the survivor or he just dropped them. They also state that the cowboy will be able to install lasso, which is a buff. Personally, that's kind of cracked, but we will need to see how it works uh, in the test servers because right now I am not very sure how it works. But the install lasso thing just feels unfair. So looking at the tree last adjustment, so they plan on making Cowboy lasso faster, which feel kind of unnecessary because while well, Cowboy isn't that hard to play and to use, these just make Cowboy way less punishable because if a Cowboy install lasso you when he's close, usually you can wait a little bit. Well, this time he's gonna go faster when he swing the lasso. You probably won't have time to react when he install lasso you anymore. But I still need to see how fast it is in the test server again. The third change is very nice because when the hunter is near a pallet or a cipher, your lasso might target the cipher or pallet. So if they fix this, it will be easier to install lasso the hunter when he's near a pallet. And for the last adjustment, I don't quite understand it, but I think they're gonna adjust the vertical range of the cowboy lasso because yes if you target over the head of the hunter it's still gonna target the hunter for some reason it also do that on the sides but they don't wanna fix that i guess because it's too hard to aim at the hunter next is gravekeeper and these adjustments are really just unfair so the first adjustment is basically it makes gravekeeper dig your hole faster and also exit it faster so the problem here is that it basically allow gravekeeper mains to use it in front of the hunter and literally not get hit or punished by it what happened when a gravekeeper gets hit while he is digging a hole is that the gravekeeper lose a shovel and he lose a health state which is very bad for the team because the Gravekeeper has to rescue. So this change basically make Gravekeeper unpunishable, I mean almost, but it sure will make Hunter's life a pain. Because the whole point of the Gravekeeper having a window where you can hit him while he's digging with a shovel is because the Gravekeeper has to think where to dig so he can be safe from the hunter attack and it's not even hard to do there's also resource management where you will avoid using the shovel so you keep your ability so you basically have to think when to use the ability but now you won't really need to think because if the hunter is too close you just use it in front of him and the hunter can't do anything about it now moving on to the next adjustment which is kind of ridiculous in short, if you attack the Gravekeeper while he's underground, you will receive a 10% slower attack recovery, which is crazy, because not only do they make Gravekeeper less punishable, but they also punish the Hunter for eating a Gravekeeper. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing, I think on its own it will be great, but with the new buff next to it, I don't think it's a good thing. And while these changes won't make Gravekeeper S tier, it will definitely make him more annoying to face against. Next character we have Percy and his next adjustment is actually huge. Because that adjustment might boost Percy to A tier or even A plus tier. I mean just look at these Persona traits and you will understand. We also must not forget that Percy is a 4.73 speed hunter, which means just getting the speed boost of the mock Persona threat 
will make Percy impossible to loop. Yes, Percy has to down a survivor in the first place, but the thing is that unlike other hunters who camp, Percy doesn't camp, so he benefits from it a lot. That was all I had to say about Percy, there's definitely more, but I am just not sure if they're gonna make a control freak available to Percy, because it might make Percy way better if they don't adjust it correctly. Anyways, now let's talk about Journalist. So Journalist is getting two adjustments and they are very great. Like being able to place the illusion through wall, which will be very useful for body blocks. And also that she can place the little Orphe without having to aim at a pallet. At first this might look not very strong. But you could use it to block windows for a short time more effectively or send out the Orphe in an open area like if there's no pallet around you send the Orphe running in front of you in an open area so he can give you a speed boost and not give up on you when he's next to a pallet. And for the second adjustment it's just an increase of the illusion placing range. Again, it will be very useful for body block, for the late game or the mid game. Alright, moving on to the gamekeeper and his adjustments are also good. But the first adjustment is just a bug fix. If you wanna know why, in a video I posted, it was a gamekeeper gameplay, I could stack traps together at an exit gate keypad and all the survivors were trapped trying to open the exit gate and they couldn't remove a trap because if they did there was another trap below that would trap them. Anyways back to uh, the adjustments, the two last which is the faster retrieve speed when you hook a survivor and an increase of 1 second of the furry hook which is the final presence ability of the gatekeeper where he can spam his hook within 3 seconds but now 4 seconds and that's probably the best adjustment he's getting there one of the problem of the 3 seconds recast duration was that usually you will run out of time before being able to hook the survivor in the, good, the perfect timing so this is an actual good change. Next is Postman and it's quite hard to identify what this means. But from what I can understand, it basically overall increased the dog speed, movement speed. And there's also the UI improvement. And that's pretty much all there is to say to the Postman adjustment. Next is Lawyer and I'm kind of proud of Nietzsche's for nerfing Lawyer but I think they should just remove the movement speed. Lawyer is supposed to rotate and avoid meeting the hunter but giving him a movement speed just ruin the point of Lawyer being a decoder. He's basically a kiter with this movement speed and as much as people wanna don't play this well, not everyone, but say that 3% is unnoticeable, you will notice the 3% when he's looping you and transition kiting. So that's all I have to say about the lawyer adjustments. Now let's move on to the last and probably the most interesting one, the evil reptilian adjustment. So we will talk about the first two quickly because it's not very important but nevertheless it's still a, a thing so the first is uh, a bug fix kind of a bug fix because when the survivors turn you and you crash there's a chance that they cancel your crash by stunning you at the right time it happened rarely but it happened it that's a problem for the cooldown reduction by one second 
it's uh, great because that means Hero Rapturian can spam his jump more often. Well, usually a 1 second cooldown off won't be that crazy, but for characters that have a high movement speed like Geisha or Evil Reptilian, this is a good buff. Now to the third adjustment, and it's probably one of the biggest buff ever given to a hunter. Because look at this. Soul Weaver has like an energy bar, but when she uses webs, when she spam them, she is limited to obstacle around them. Meanwhile, Evil Reptilian can jump from anywhere and when he wants. It only activates at tier 2, so the final presence of Evil Reptilian, but it's usually when it's the end game. And now Evil Reptilian end game will be one of the best. Though it's very speculative what we could say about this, but from what we saw in the tournaments, Evil Reptilian's performance were great. And this new buff will allow the Evil Reptilian's main to clutch more wins more often. We can expect the Evil Reptilian mains to rise to the top now because this buff is actually one of the best buffs ever. And with that, I finish my analysis. Keep in mind that these are very speculative analysis because we haven't seen how it looked like and it's probably gonna be shown in the test server the next season. Or I mean the before the next season. So, well, I hope you enjoyed the video and goodbye.